broke my ankle. Are you on drugs? Psh, no, bitch, shut the fuck up. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Fallacious Truth. Today, we're going to be looking at, of, of all things, Karens. Yeah, I originally told myself that I wouldn't cover this at all, as there are so many out there, but I changed my mind. I'm actually only going to be covering Karens if there's a valid point to be made with regards to red pill content or the Manosphere. And lo and behold, sure enough, I found one. Well, several to be exact, but... You know, part of me always wonders if this stuff is staged. But then you simply have to think to yourself, why on earth would someone put themselves in this kind of situation on purpose for clicks or views? But then again, in the society we live in today, I really wouldn't put it past her or anyone for that matter. In an area where instant gratification is king and validation of all kinds is paramount above all else, I suppose what would be impossible suddenly becomes possible. Now, let's take a look at this here. Don't park in fucking... Go ahead! Tell him to stop parking in front of my fucking property! And that goddamn shit too! Park right in front of my fucking driveway! Go fuck yourselves! Nobody parked in front of your driveway. I'm not a fucking man! This is the same thing you're doing. You're on my fucking property. I don't want you on my fucking property. You big fucking lip. Leave me the fuck alone. I'm gonna call the police now, okay? Well, good. Get the fuck off my property. Right. Get the fuck off my property. God damn. You know what? Give me your phone. What? What? My phone is hey. hey, excuse hey, me. Relax. Excuse me. No, you're just assaulting me. No. You're pushing. You broke my ankle. You broke my ankle. <laughs> what the? You hell? broke my ankle. Are you on drugs or something? Are you on drugs? Get the fuck off my property now. Jeez. What, who's parking? You park in front oh of my, my property. God. Don't park in front. Who are you servicing right now? Who are you? Stop it. Why? They're parked in front of my property. Close the door. He broke my ankle. He twisted my ankle. I'm calling the police on you. Uh, Madison oh Avenue in East Brunswick. Uh, I'm trying to park in the street to do some work at a customer's house. And a neighbor came out and she just... Freaked out. All right, let's take a look at what this deranged woman did. She comes over to a vehicle which is parked on the side of the road, which is almost always legal in a residential area, claiming that he's parked in front of her driveway, which he clearly isn't, as we can see the driveway off to the right in the background there. From there, she proceeds to open his car door, and we can clearly see that she isn't all there upstairs. Or is she? You know, perhaps she is simply so entitled that she believes that, as a woman, she can do whatever she pleases. In any case, she places her hands on his personal property, opening up where he would be considered safe in the vehicle without his consent. Remember, fellas, consent only works one way, and that's pretty much the way it is for everything. He first tries to put up his window, personally, I think, because he's going to try to close the door. And who wouldn't? You know, she's clearly deranged. After attempting to do so, this crazy bitch then proceeds to take his phone, assaulting him in the process. He then attempts to defend himself by simply placing his arm in between himself and her, and she gets shoved back. Then, she has the audacity to say to him that he assaulted her. She proceeds to say that she broke her ankle while she is miraculously still standing up, making more attempts to assault him. Fellas, this is why in my divorce prep series... I state that an absolutely essential and crucial piece of equipment you must obtain is a digital recorder, at the very least, so you can at least record these conversations. You need to have something that you can play back to the police so you can prove your innocence. Remember, you will not be believed simply on your word alone. She then proceeds to take a step back to continue her lies of, he broke my ankle. Then she suddenly changes it to, he twisted my ankle. You know, just as an observation, the moment she walked away, he should have taken that opportunity to close the door for his own safety, as she could have simply said anything about him and tried to get anyone to believe it. I mean, I've seen this firsthand. All she has to do is start yelling in the streets, making up anything she can to say about him, and without evidence, without proof, people will tend to believe her simply because she's a woman. You know, this is one of the prevailing tactics that women have that men clearly don't. And if it wasn't for this recording, if it wasn't for the video evidence that we can see here, he could have very well gone to jail as it would take nothing for her to lie to the cops whenever they come on the scene. Now, let's just for a moment take a step back and look at this from a different perspective. Let's think about switching the genders here. K 
Can you even imagine if it were a man harassing a woman sitting in the public street like this? Can you imagine what would happen to a man if he were to try to force himself into a vehicle with a woman in it, steal her phone, physically assault her, and then gaslight her? The way she very clearly did here? My friends, he would be hauled away in handcuffs without question, and quite honestly, rightfully so. As if it were a man, he would have no business at all behaving in this manner. Not her, though. Not a woman, as she knows that she has special privileges in society. She knows she can get away with damn near anything, gaslight the opposing party, and then try to get everything blamed on him. Thank goodness he was able to have this recorded so he had backups, you know, something just to corroborate his story here. You know, that brings to mind something else here too. She can clearly dish it out. It's almost as though she's trying to goad him into fighting her to a certain point. I mean, the moment he goes to defend himself, she gets shoved back a little bit and immediately jumps up, blaming it on him, saying that he assaulted her when clearly she is the aggressor. She knows that societal standards state that he can't do this to her, but she can and she knows she can get away with it. Societal standards say that he can't defend himself, and if he is forced to, he better damn sure better not make a mark on her, even if it's self-inflicted by her. You know, that puts us men in a precarious situation. What do we do when we face an instance when we face a... Uh, a situation where we're forced to defend ourselves against a female. You know, I can say from personal experience that it puts you in a very tough position. The moment you're thrusted into that situation, you have several options before you. You can either A, take action, try to defend yourself, and pray to God that you don't leave a mark by simply acting in a purely defensive manner, such as throwing your arms up when she's throwing a punch at you. You know, your muscle mass and your bones are more dense than hers. If she punches hard enough, she's going to be the one with the bruise, not you. And at that instance, if her actions don't yield the results she wants, she could very well take it to the next level. You can try to back yourself into another room, which is clearly a viable option if you're able to do that. Um, if and when you have backed yourself up, I would then start recording if you haven't recorded already, just so you have something to, to corroborate your side of the story whenever, if, you know, the police come, if she tries to call them, say that you did something when you really didn't do it. You know, at that point, use anything you have at your disposal to, to try to record what's going on there. You see, what's really bothersome is women know that there isn't a whole lot that society says we can do to defend ourselves against them, physically speaking. If they assault us, we have to be extremely careful how we respond. And they know this. You know, a man would never strike another man thinking that there won't be consequences for that action. You know, if a man strikes another man, one of two things is going to happen. One man is going to end up curb stomping the other one or they're going to shake it out in part ways but more often than not i think the former would happen in that instance you see women know that we can't do that so they know they can take it to the next level they keep taking it up and taking it up more and more till they see where our breaking point is and once we hit our breaking point that's where we have to be careful we have to make sure we either don't hit that breaking point or we need to have a way of somehow backing up our story when the cops eventually come. Cause that happens more often than not because naturally the woman thinks she's going to be able to get away with whatever it is she's doing. And why wouldn't she think that society teaches that she can? Women love equality as long as equality doesn't upset their status quo. When it does upset their status quo, they return to the perpetual victim, the uh, damsel in distress, if you will. And they keep that act up until their end goal is achieved. Bottom line, in a situation like this, walk away if you can. If you can't, you defend yourself. But you do it as tactfully as possible and you do it, hopefully with a recording, something to corroborate your story. Because you will never be believed over her. Ever. You know, it's a travesty that we even have to think along these lines. And thank you for joining me for my first Karen Reaction video. There will be plenty more where this came from, so please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll make sure to get more content out for you. Also, I'll leave a link here at the end of some of my other videos. Once again, thank you much and take care.